Sure. Magic mapping. Glaciate, Firestorm, and Charm. Uh, no, this isn't a new roguelike. It's been out for a couple of years, since 2017 or so. At least it's full release. Um, it's it's getting a, a pretty significant new update, though, which is really cool. So we're checking it out. Let's mess around with Charm again. Let's see if I can Charm the Rat. Sweet. Get ourselves a little rat friend. Use our health potion. There's some turn randomization, so that guy would have gotten a couple of hits on us before we got to like lure him into sunlight or something. And he could have killed us with any attack. Shoot that bee down. Let's um, raise our decks. Heal up. This floor. I don't think there are any changes to the charm with this patch. All right, we got hedge maze, so no menagerie. I blew the opportunity to check out the new branch for now. All right, raise my decks again. Get ourselves a wolf pal. Did we lose our wolf? Oh, I guess it gets stuck on allies sometimes, or on neutrals. Okay. Devour killed our wolf. Pull this guy down. Hmm. I don't think we're going to be able to kill the devourer with sunlight. bomb this thing. Oh crap, I messed up. Well, I'm gonna have to give him a free hit. 
Your bomb skill conserves a potion. Hell yeah. Yeah, this is a great game, um, Arbalist Chemist. Or, or Alchemist. It's definitely one of my favorite roguelikes. Highly recommended. Oh, cool, Atheros. Yeah, we're definitely going to do the weekly at some point. All right, bomb paid off there. Is that Grotto? All right, same plan. Let's start cranking our intelligence. Oof. I believe we didn't kill that bee yet. I guess he kept missing us. Oh, there's multiple bees. Yeah, cranking in is tough to play. Especially if we spend spending a lot of time in vampire form. Definitely normally do not build around intelligence so much. <laughs> nice, having them blow up the walls like that is excellent. Cool, is able to lure this guy into the water. Actually, every point we put into intelligence, at this point where I'm like chilling as a vampire, is basically like not a point used for anything useful. At least we're not making use of it yet. Oh, I wanted that blood. There we go. Going upstairs while it's sunlight out. Not too bad. Got a manual. Pharmacopia again. Might just dive back in there. It's a pretty safe place to go as a vampire. At least the first floor is. Oh god. The Solmanar already? I don't think I can fight that guy right now.
Let's go to the pharmacopia. And I might just have to turn into a vampire. Uh, he might have forgot us, or lost us. I was going to say I might have to turn into a human when we come out. Alright, let's keep it dark in here so we can't see us. I feel like we already have more potions than we got like all of last game. You know what? We ended up with like a lot of health potions last game. I wonder if that's where a lot of them went. I actually have four revealing essence potions right now too, which is interesting. Sun's out. I think now I go into Pharma Copia. Yes, we already towed. That is a jumping tree. Oh my god, a polar bear. The first time I've seen that sprite, too. You need to make plushies of all the new monsters. Polar bear plushie would be awesome, too. This is what I'm talking about. That was a lot of potions. Okay, we're about to the point where we want to think about turning into a human again. be careful and make sure I have routes back to the stairs just in case I get something's attention by making too much noise. Oh, there's the graveyard. Now that's a safe place to hang out. Speaking of safe places. Ooh, um. So the graveyard itself is kind of bad for vampires because all these skeletons do a lot pretty good damage and you can't heal off of them. Oh my god, I may have just killed myself. <laughs> I should have used the Revealing Essence Potion, maybe. Yeah, that was a little too crazy. If you can maneuver around the skeletons, I was going to see if I could find the the uh, the, the mausoleum entrance. Because you, usually you can just avoid these guys. Alright, I think we can teleport. There we go. We 
Now we can't bomb in, in vampire form. I'm still gonna die to these guys. Let me kill this one at least. Aether potion. Alright, so we have physical resistance. That should help. I wonder which one of these is blood. Hey, what up, Vectus? I hope we look spooky. We are vampires, after all. Alright, so the mausoleum is a pretty safe place for us to be as a vampire. No rest healing? Yeah, when you're a vampire, you actually take damage when you rest. So you have to keep feeding on blood, otherwise you die. Sweet. We got ourselves a back door. I'm a vampire right now. That's why all the other vampires are cool with us. Oh, you're asking Zylan? Hello guys, Yaka. Welcome. Getting his bird thing. Roguelikes? Yeah, that's what... Pretty much all we play here? No, that's definitely all we play here. And here's the biggest, baddest vampire of them all. Luckily he's friendly. Vlad the Strigoi. Vampire Necromancer, capable of raising the dead and turning them into vampires, regardless of their previous station in life. Been playing Cogmine lately? Oh, we play a ton of Cogmine here. You're in the right spot. So there's really good loot on the other side of these water pools. At least those other two. Do we have an option to attack Vlad if we want? So you can switch between vampire form and human form. So when you're human, you can attack him. But we can't hurt him when we're in vampire form. And more specifically, he'll attack us when we're in human form. I was going to say we had a float potion, so I could hover over here and pick some up some of this loot. I don't know if I can outheal the water. And now there's like a soaking wet effect that does even more damage to you, I think, when you're a vampire. So I think we have to ignore this loot for now, unfortunately.
Uh, this is a big NetHack channel as well. <laughs> this bird thing. It's like you knew all the games we play here. Alright. We're gonna... Stay like this for now. I'm not gonna greed for any of that stuff. Oh yeah, there's loot up here as well. The reason I didn't explore up here first when I saw the downstairs is because I think the lower level has better loot. Uh, maybe that's not true. But if you find like a plus four item and then a plus six item, you just get the plus six item because the equipment and inventory is simplified in this game. But if you find a plus six and then a plus four, you sell the plus four item. So you end up with a plus six and like extra gold. Although there aren't merchants in this game on this build, so I guess I shouldn't have to worry about any gold. But yeah, sometimes I leave like low-ish level gear down here until I explore the whole place, because there's often very high level gear here. Oh yeah, that's... <laughs> a lot of people enjoy roguelikes and I wouldn't say suck at them, as you use, but yeah, aren't very good at them. There's nothing wrong with that. Roguelikes can be quite enjoyable, even while you, like, lose them a lot. Which is really cool. Because some games just get really frustrating when you lose them. And roguelikes sometimes dying is the best part. The most complex traditional roguelike? Um, that's a good question. Oh, here's a good question if Jer is still here. If you turn on torches on this first floor, they automatically extinguish every time you return to the floor, but on the, the floor below, they don't. And I don't know if that's intended or not. Seems kind of weird. It's a little exploitable. Indeed a bug, you guess. Yeah, it's been in the game so long, it almost makes you wonder if it's a feature. Exploitable, do tell. Well, this branch, since you have to come back down as a, a human to kill the boss, generally you go down as a vampire first, clear out all the stuff that's hostile to vampires, because most of it is beasts that are hostile to humans and vampires. But you have a much easier time doing it as a vampire, because none of the vampires are hostile. Then you come back as a human, but if you come down and turn on all the lights or the torches in the bottom floor, you have a much easier time as a human. So it's a lot harder when they all turn off. And it's weird when only this first floor does it, because this first floor is smaller, so it's not really as big of a deal. I have not tried Jupiter Hell. I have the game. I want to play Doom RL soon and then jump into Jupiter Hell. It looks like a really cool game. I'm really excited to check it out at some point. And uh, I was still thinking about your question, Gusyaka, about the most complex traditional roguelike. I actually think Cogmind and NetHack, which I don't know if that's just recency bias since people are just talking about them, but those are two pretty complex ones in different ways. Actually, the complexity of Cogmind is something I really enjoy about it. And I don't like just calling them complex, because I think complex is, in my mind, often a bad thing in roguelikes. Unless it's, like, implemented well. If there's, like, a lot of strategic complexity to them, then that's good. Like, this game is really simple, but it has a lot of strategy built around the simple mechanics, which is neat. So, I think the surface level, it's really simple, but then it's got this complex layer to it. I think Cogmine definitely fits that description, though. NetHack become, has a complexity to like how you use the inventory and your items and resources, and how you build towards like the the mid and end game.
Cogmine is complex because there's a lot of different branches and there are, a lot of them are mutually exclusive, so you can pick and choose where they are. And sometimes if they're on the same floor, that affects things. And there's a lot of different build types. That's what I enjoy about that game. All right, I might want to be human to fight these these guys. Do I shapeshift right now? I think we do. Okay, we automatically use all of our books. Let's identify this, because if we have a big potion... Well, I'll just say that's a big deal. Um, we automatically read a manual, we got plus one strength. Probably not going to help our build a whole lot. Let's ID this. Just figuring out if this is volatile or not would be nice. Okay, dead eyes, those are good. We get to learn a spell, cleanse, levitate, or tempest. Cleanse is pretty good for the gallery boss and the pharma boss. It's a pretty solid utility spell in general. Levitate is quite nice. And if we get the statue form potion, statues can now move around while they're levitating, which would be fun to do. I don't know if we get that potion was generated in this game. And Tempest is just all around, or all around pretty solid while you're in human form. I think I'm going to go with Tempest because we don't have a lot of offensive stuff yet. Oh, that's true. When we're in the gallery, we could become a statue, but I'd probably rather cleanse that off. <laughs> Alright, let's go with the Tempest for now. And I'm actually going to use that almost immediately. I want to heal. It's probably not going to happen. Alright. So now I've created like a water pool. When enemies are in water, they're they're like slower. All right, and now we have this new status effect, wet, soaking wet, which gives slightly more protection against fire. It's five turns, good to know. All right, I'm gonna lure this guy into the, the water. Hmm. Maybe I should make a safe floor down here. I can rest that too. We are starving. Okay, so he won't actually come to us in the water. Let's eat some curry. So I used Tempest again and it filled his tile. Vampires take damage in water, by the way. I can actually heal right here completely safely. Oh, that's a noble, isn't it? Let's back up. Just let him die to the water. Those guys are tough as nails. The water is permanent, yeah. Oh, so tombstones have new descriptions now, I think. Oh, maybe not? Am I supposed to attack it? Oh, okay, down here, T is a read thing now. Oh my god! <laughs> this is a bad omen. <laughs> All of the developer patrons have a... Uh, Tombstones, and I guess I'll have epitaphs soon as well. As well. <laughs> now that is creepy. I'm just gonna not mess with those anymore. The 
that's all I need to see. This is a little weird how the tombstones disappear now out of line of sight. You end up with like a bunch of pits. Actually, let's get rid of that. Um, I'm gonna leave that skeleton corpse there and we're gonna heal up. All right. We're in a decent spot now. I, I need to get more spells if we're going to do this caster thing. I didn't explore this whole floor yet, did I? Hmm, or a Calcum Sword. Chill with these guys and heal up. Oh, we're a statue now. Too bad I didn't take that levitate spell. Gorgon's gaze turned us to stone. You wanna try and stair dance here? Just to not make noise? Okay, he made noise. Okay, I don't want to fight that. And this is terribly ominous. Although, is this? Plus nine breastplate. I see. We only have plus four plate. Wouldn't mind getting me some of that. I wonder if I can lure some of those guys into the sunlight. That's just a sand viper. Can I charm you? Oh, hell yeah. Tame sand viper. Oh, snap. I didn't notice that knight sneaking up on me.
All right, so we turn back into a vampire. Charm the Balor. I think that's low probability, and I didn't really want to risk it. Although I guess, what is the range on Charm? I could probably use it without them seeing me, but they'll they'll hear me casting it and then they'll come to me. It's a risky proposition. I think I'm gonna turn back into a human. Power is kind of terrible, actually, because they can't see. That's a good point. <laughs> she may be... I'll fight this guy. Oh god, the... It's in the sunlight. Here we go. It'd be nice to go back down as a vampire. Although I guess I'm not getting anywhere with that sunlight there, but it has gone away. So let's fight this guy. Heal up. You are friend now. Oh God, this guy's gonna wreck us. This is where we turn back into a human. So if it's anything in line of sight, we could try... Oh, hell yeah. We did it. <laughs> we charmed the Balor. Turn up the light so you can see, my friend. Oh, heck yeah. All right. Protect me as I heal. Desktop dungeons? I've been wanting to check that out. I haven't actually played that. That was definitely popular like... A while ago, like five years ago or something. It was like at, probably at its peak. All right, let's go boss hunting with this Balor. I was looking for something to help us take out the green greenhouse boss, and this guy's gonna be perfect because he'll actually be able to see the greenhouse boss in the night, which is when we want to fight him. Oh god, yeah, he can't follow us. <laughs> Oh god. Okay, maybe he is kind of awful. <laughs> I need to get him down two floors. Come on, friend. Can you not see in the dark either? Hmm, I guess this is it. Oh, here we go. Where'd he go? Found ya. It's only slightly awkward.
Holy crap. He just killed like four bees. Yeah, I noticed some of your comments were coming in late, Athros. Um, refreshing might fix that. And yeah, maybe we probably should have taken him up for the Admantine Breastplate. Okay, there's the boss. The boss is usually good to fight in the middle here, so you can get him slowed down. Oh man, he wrecked my uh my Balor. <laughs> uh oh. Wait, we can charm him. Ah, he resisted. He got a crit on the Balor. He did 51 damage. Oh my god. And now I'm terrified. I don't have any way to heal if this goes poorly. I don't think my bombs are strong enough yet. Yeah, Aether and Deadeye are what I was looking at. I totally agree with that. Those were definitely the two potions I was eyeing. Deadeye in vampire form is really strong because you basically get a, a blood drop every turn. And I can actually exploit this terrain to get it every single turn, just go back and forth if I need to. But I don't even think we need that. If we do Aether and then Deadeye. Oh yeah, Aether is way better than I thought it was. And I plus nine sword, or how strong is my sword? Plus eight. Sweet. So this guy used to give a ton of XP, um, but it got cut in half. But let's start raising our intelligence now. We did get one level up off of that. Oh, I'm uh, weak to water right now because of the Aether. Um, no, I'm resistant to it, but I, I still take damage. So we can probably move through this. Alright, so this ring gives us ice resistance and plus 20 hit points. Oops. Can't believe um, he killed our Balor so fast. That guy was kind of annoying to carry around, but pretty strong. Like, extremely strong. It was like... You had to kind of work with the shortcomings, but it seemed worth it. And balanced in that way. Okay, I don't think I appreciated how strong we, we actually got in human form. I need some, some spells. We gotta go to the library. Find us some spell books. Let's try floor 8 again. Start turning these lanterns on again. <laughs> Oops, that's not where I wanted to go. Is this where the breastplate was? In the top left? I do not remember. No, it was the floor below, the next floor up. Okay. There it is. The breastplate. Oh, here's the gallery. Probably just want to go in there. Before we go any further, so I don't get in a hunger issue when we get deeper. 
Alright, yeah, the boss is in the middle here, so I wanted to try and turn the lights out. Yeah, we can bomb through the blue blocks, I believe, so that's going to be really, really powerful. Alright, we've slowed her. With the water, of course. Tamed her snakes. Snakes were generating like more snakes. Alright, so I just dropped a bomb to my left. No potion use either. And I shot her. Well, shooting her is pretty strong to begin with, but I wanted her to see me so she'd actually walk into the potion. Or the bomb. Nice. And if she got lit on fire from the bomb, um, she fell back in the water. And I just remembered water gives that wet effect now. Which means the bomb, which does fire damage, is not as good against her. Alright, let's shoot her again. Cool. We killed her without getting stoned and destroyed. Yeah, great anti-synergy, right? <laughs> Alright. Keep raising my intelligence now. Cool, this gives us um, poison resistance and bonus poison attacks, which is pretty solid. Okay. Let's turn the lanterns back on. Finish clearing this floor. Oh, we're about to turn into a vampire again. I'm actually low on soul elixirs this game. So now I can't cast bomb on these things, and vampire form's not very good in the next level. I'll give it a try, though. It's bad because of the golems, mostly, so if I don't run into any golems... Everything will be cool. That's a golem. That's a weak golem, though. This dude just had, like, his own hallway. <laughs> That's a strong golem. The thing with those golems is they take a pretty good chunk of our health off, and we can't heal afterwards because they don't drop blood. Okay, the boss is going to be one of those rooms. Uh-oh. This ruby golem uh, got wise to us. I may want to turn to a human soon. Actually, we're just going to teleport. And I might turn into a human now.
Oh, in case. That's a new spell. Ice would be good so we get a decent um, offensive ability. But teleport's pretty strong and I'm out of potions. I kind of want to grab that. I feel like we might need it. There's a Levitate spell again. I don't think we have um, statue Petrify Potions in this game, though. So we can't use the, the Flying Statue strats. The true Flying Brick. Yeah, Tempest 2 does look good. What does it do? More chances to produce water. I just need to find Glaciate next. Alright, now we have this guy to deal with. I believe Glaciate does hurt you. All right. You know, I've never appreciated this before, but Tempest is pretty good for making these little healing islands. Let's find a way back to the stairs before I get into any more trouble. Oh, I can uh, blow these things up now. Gotcha. Okay, so we it consumes a potion every time I use a bomb. So I guess we have to decide whether um, consuming a potion is worth getting what's in these things. I think I have a max shield already. No, my shield's only plus six, so that's a pretty good shield right there. And this one's better though. There's a okay. This is definitely worth it, I think. Although there were there was some really good gear, and I believe there was a shield in. In the mausoleum. We'd have to kill the the boss there to get access to it. I wonder if that's worth saving a, a bomb for or not. Hmm. Bombs are potions are pretty valuable, and we don't have a ton of them. How much gold is that? Not that gold does anything in this game because hawkers are gone right now. All right, so we have a primer, a spell book, some bullets, some gold, and some shields. I think that shield on the left is probably worth it. Let's go and break that open. Hell yeah, our bomb skill conserves a potion. This is the most talented and skilled bombardier we've had yet. And then I might grab that spell book, but I feel like we should clear the library first. Because we might get all the spells we want here. Oh, shoot. Oh, come on. <laughs> Fine. 
just be like that. <laughs> Glow cleanse, charm level two. Lens is pretty good, but I think it's a little worse at this point in the game. Because we already finished one of the bosses that's really good against. And we have two panaceas, which kind of do the same thing. Now, charm level 2 is tempting. Why not? Maybe we can raise a Balor army. Oh my god, two manuals in here? That's awesome. Those ice golems are weak to sunlight. So his golem buddy just heard him. Wait, so this guy freely jumps into water, but the ice golem doesn't? Are you weak to water? Or resist. Okay, so you do take damage in water. Hell yeah, we got plus one dex and plus one intelligence from that. Oh my god, Tempest level three? Or we can mess up around with in case. I feel like Encase and Tempest have similar use cases though, so I think doubling down on, or getting both of those is a, I don't know, they can, they occupy a lot of the same, like, strategic space. Kind of terrain control around you. I haven't used Encase yet. We could ditch Tempest and take Encase if we wanted to just try it out. Although, level 3 Tempest just sounds awesome. I'm gonna take that. Like, we're just gonna, like, fill rooms with water, I think. I don't think I've ever had a Tempest this high level. Oh, hell yeah, we got our bomb again. Alright, bigger and more damaging explosion. Oh, the explosion gets bigger? Heck yeah. This is a little risky, maybe? Actually, you could crit me and kill me. So yeah, that was a lot of risky, actually. Let's heal up. Oh, we're starving. Sure, I'll eat. Are oh, those were already on. I'm surprised how dark it was over here. One more room down here. We could check the princess chambers, but that would mean we release her. Uh, there's no humans around here. Should be fine. And there is a spell book here. Levitate again, glow again, and charm. All right, we're going with level three charm now. When we set out on this adventure, I didn't expect us to be a, a charming, tempesting spellcaster, because there's just some niche spells, but here we are. <laughs> well, charm might not be that niche. Tempest definitely is to, to build around like this. Tempest plus Glaciate is super strong, but... Level 3 Tempest is uh, something else. We are about to turn into a vampire if I wanted to try and fight her. I 
I have ice resist. I don't think we're ready. Oh, I mean, I could probably... Like, Deadeye would probably get us a win there. Pretty soundly. You can, like, dance around her and drink her blood. We have resistance to ice, but... I don't see a reason to yet. And before we turn into a vampire, I'm gonna pop open this case as well. So maybe we can get bomb level three. I consume the summoning potion, which is not a great potion, so that's fine. Hey, what's up, uh, false officer? Welcome. Oh, I got water in here. So we have Swap Blast and Charm again. We can get the level 4 Charm. But it raises our failure rate from 2 to 25%. Level 4 spells are really hard to cast. It would consume almost half our mana. I wonder how low the resist chance really is though. Tempting. I think if we got one more intelligence. Having level four charm might be a little more castable. All right, we're going all in. Level four charm, it is. And we actually can't use that primer yet, so I'm gonna ignore that. Let's grab that gold out of habit, even though it doesn't do anything for us at the moment. Oh, there's stuff up here. We missed like a third of the level. Uh, nothing useful. Some lore books, a shield that's not as good as one we have, and some gold, which we can't use in this... This version of the game right now. Alright, not bad. Alright, so we're a vampire now. Do we want to do anything as a vampire? I don't have a lot of soul elixir. Which means I may be stuck in vampire form for a while. And if I transform, then I may end up being stuck in it for a while. So I think we should stick as a vampire for now. Now, we're not very good vampires. Because we put all our points into intelligence. But we'll try. And that, for instance, is something that could give us trouble. All right, not bad. I think some of those encounters with those wizards, we're just gonna have to get lucky with blood placement and stuff. It could go either way. Okay, that's a big tree. Yeah, we do wanna get that breastplate. We got it. Plus nine breastplate. Hell yeah. And that does help us in vampire form quite a bit. I got two soul elixirs now. Well, there's a plus nine shield. So we used the bomb to get the plus eight shield. Then we immediately found a plus seven and a plus nine shield. So I guess we didn't really need that. Here's a worser breastplate. I'm gonna stay away from that golem. Actually, I can time this. Whoops. Uh, this might be really dangerous, actually. I played that quite poorly. If that sunlight turns back on, we might be dead. So actually, let's just turn back into a human.
I still don't have any offensive spells, which makes Firestorm and... Well, oh, we have Bomb. But that makes Firestorm and Miasma a little tempting. The teleport's really good, and getting shorter duration might be pretty decent, in case we get a bad teleport. I don't know, you don't really need to level up teleport too much. If I took Firestorm or Miasma, I'd have to get rid of Teleport, Tempest, or Charm. And we haven't even used our leveled up Tempest yet, so yeah, let's just level up Teleport again. Alright, we can probably just kill this guy now. Alright. So, the message you get when trying to use these staircases before you can change, I'm curious what it says. You pass through the staircase as though it were made if it were through a ghost. You must collect four magical rings to proceed. Alright, well, no confusion about that. Yikes. Oh my god, Tempest 3, carrying hard. Sixty-five damage to the Rumi Golem. It wait. It hurt the Solmanar. Can I kill the princess with a bomb? Hold up. And what spell did that consume? Curry Noodle. That's probably fine. Let's go back to the the library and see if we can kill the boss with a bomb. Oh shit. There we go. Damn, Bell are taking out the knight. <laughs> Yeah, this ain't no game. This isn't a game where you just save the princess, False Lobster. We're like plotting an assassination. <laughs> just need to plant a bomb in her uh, her library quarters. Another spell book, and we get another bomb level. Hell yeah, bomb three. All right, Miss Princess. I could use a bomb just to break through this wall if I wanted, but I think we're going to walk around. I think we got to go the long way, because there are a bunch of vampires in that room. <laughs> Alright, I'll turn off the lights for you, dude. Did he die? Well, he did pretty good while he was there. And these Balor pets are uh, pretty good, even if you just use them as like expendable assets because they're so annoying to walk around with. Where's that princess at? All right, no potions used. Oh! <laughs> okay, bomb is a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh my god, that poor princess. Th 
Now this game did not always have pets. The charm skill or spell got added um, last October, I think, on a Halloween update. It was the previous big update the game got. There's a role called the or a disguise called the Beastmaster, which gets to use it a lot or get heavy use of it. Oh hell yeah, physical resistance and plus one speed. That was a good. That was a good drop. Oh my god, this bomb spell. <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> that was actually one of the most fun things I've done in this game, I think. That was hilarious and amazing. And it was surprising because the bomb spell up till now has been relatively weak. Even level 2 bomb wasn't amazing, but wow, we got a, we got a good spell now. Who's our next target? Go kill Vlad with a bomb. Or is he on the one next one down? This game is fantastic, Attack the Moon. Highly recommended. Alright. How are we gonna do this? Bomb planted. Oh shoot. I'm gonna get caught in the blast. I wonder if he'll take damage if I teleport away. How big was the blast radius? I wonder if this tile is too far away. Because I could go one... I think we got to teleport. I'm starving, so let me drink an ale. <laughs> Okay, it still blows up. Oh, the bomb teleport strats are strong. Okay. Yeah, drink an ale, hear a faint boom in the background and level up. Yeah, we basically planted a bomb, teleported out of the room, and then just uh, took a very smug sip of our ale. So our spells seem pretty strong at this point. I'm wondering if we start raising decks. Oh, you know what? I, when we leveled up Charm, I said we want one more point of intelligence. So let's do that. Yeah, so this dropped from 25 to 13% failure. We need to find Bomb 4. Is there a torch up here? I want to see the... I was going to say see the mess, but I guess there isn't a mess. Everything's just gone. Alright, cool. We got Psychic Resistance. <laughs> Dumb vampires. Cool, we got upgraded leggings. Did I get something at the top one? Mithril Revolver. Sweet. This is a really interesting build. I've never played around... Well, Bomb is like a new spell, so I definitely haven't played around that, but like... Tempest, too?
Um, so we have enough rings to finish the game. And as much as I want to, like, go for bomb four and keep, like, blowing stuff up, we probably should end this game soon so we can check out some of the, more, the other new content. There's two other new disguises and a whole new branch we haven't seen yet. But maybe we should go, like, and blow up one more thing. I wonder what floor 9 has. Let's see what branch is up there. Whoops. Okay, this wall's annoying. <laughs> it's gonna blow up everything. This guy's annoying, oh my god. Yeah, the disguises are your classes in this game. Did you get this manual before I turn to a vampire? Hell yeah, plus one strength right before we hit Vampire. That's a good hit, or a good upgrade. I think that point of strength gives us plus two because the Vampire gets 50%. Uh-oh. This Water Pixie's using our Tempest Strats against us. Yeah, she's hard to kill too. Water's not actually hurting me that much. Oh my god, that's scary. These green guys are kind of harmless. Oh, there's water everywhere. This game actually does have controller support, Attack the Moon. Very rare for a roguelike. Um, you cannot leave and change disguises in this bird thing. You pick it when you start the game, and you play the whole game as the disguise. Alright, I guess we'll just kill you. Eh, maybe I'll leave you here. Oh, the laboratory, or laboratory. Laboratory, I said that like I'm in Dexter's lab. Um, this place actually sucks for vampires. I want to know what's on the top, though. Oh, we have three revealing essence potions. So let's just, oh my god, the stairs are all the way over there. And I don't think we have enough food to get there as a human, either. Is this the fast one or the slow one? This is the fast one. So there's two floors to the laboratory. The first one speeds up everything by 10, and the other one slows down everything by 10. And vampires take a ton of damage over time. Or they, well, they take damage over time, but in this room where everything's sped up, they take a ton of damage over time. And the blood pools dry up really fast, so you don't even get to like heal. It's pretty rough. I don't think we want to be here as a vampire. And I do have two soul elixirs. But I think just walking through here as a human procs our vampire counter very quickly. And we so I don't want to waste soul elixirs here either. Uh but screw it. Let's do it anyways. We actually have so much health that that wasn't as bad as it could have been. 
Now things are slow on this floor. Am I taking too much of a risk here? I probably am. Let me teleport away and heal. The thing is, we we're ex resistant to ice fighting that guy. Yeah, I just wanted to get some blood off of him, but we got pretty close. I don't think we would have died, but we could have. And that would have been a shame at this point in the game. Alright, let me use another revealing essence potion. Just find the stairs. You know what I should do? This thing freezes time. Oh! That didn't work because I just teleported, which made us unstable. And we're unstable for a very long time because everything's going slow here. Never mind. Let's just turn into a human. Now that we're here, because we want to use a human on the next floor anyways. I don't know how much damage these things can do, I'm a little concerned. Oh, and our health and mana regen really slowly here because everything slowed down. So I can't really cast that often. I want to sleep so I feel better. Hey, the lab is nasty. Right. Um, I might want to go back downstairs, actually. Oh god, the... The noble caught up with me. I don't know if this was always the case, but I can't using the numpad. No, I think this is new. It won't let me move into the dark tiles. Which I believe is a bug. I need to write that down. I noticed that before, I couldn't figure out what was going on, but I can aim with the mouse still. I'm starving. Alright, well we healed a bit. Let's go back up. I imagine if we made a bomb here, it would take forever to explode too. Oh, and if we made one on the floor below, it would probably blow up really fast. Can I shoot this from here? No. Alright. Everything's frozen. Actually, we have four turns of frozen right now. If I drop a bomb, I don't think I can escape. Because it might blow up the turn the frozen goes away because everything's sped up on this map. Alright, I won't do that as much as I want to. Okay, that worked. Okay, this is the workshop. I was hoping for the, the other boss. Do, we even, do I even care about getting this ring? I don't think we do. Let's just leave. 
The workshop bomb does have some interesting potential there because of how that's laid out. But teleport's probably stronger in general there, but I just don't want to mess with it. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here before I starve. Okay. I really want to blow someone up with a, a bomb before we leave. Do we go all the way down to the Pharmacopia? I guess we do. Uh-oh. We can get down there pretty fast. Now we're starving again. Let me drink an ale. Ooh, if I don't leave, we might die of hunger. I guess I could do the hive real quick too, if that's a concern. I don't know how much how much hover our bombs you or hunger our bombs use. I'm out of food though. Uh, maybe we just end the game. I, I we had two epic bombs. That's probably good enough for me. And we have other content to check out. Oh, and there's one more epic bomb to be had. Can I kill you before talking to you? Yo, how deep does this room go? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Can we break the game by like bombing off the map somehow? Hang on. Oh, I think we found the edge. Right, we're gonna do some remodeling. That looks like the edge of this side of the map. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have enough food to clear out this whole map like I kind of want to. So... We win! <laughs> I don't know if the bomb is supposed to hurt people that are allied with you, like the princess and like Fane right there. But that was a ton of fun. Yeah, killing the princess and the Strigoi with bombs was a, a highlight of that run right there. <laughs> that was amazing. Alright, we got our crown on the Bombardier.